Periscope Time Machine Transport, my beautiful wife Sarah. Say hi. <laughs> Doing uh, brakes on this Benson trailer. So my wife's getting my rig all loaded up because I'm leaving Thursday going to California. But um, so what I like to do is keep the truck idling and release your trailer brakes so they're free, or else you're gonna have to back your brakes off which if you don't know how to do that you gotta get into the brake chamber right there and there's uh i don't know it's, it's it's not not difficult but it's more work so what i like to do is like i said keep hook the truck up and release the brakes so my tractor brakes are set but i release my my trailer brakes so i already did this this uh wheel um, when I had a leaky wheel seal um, But I'm gonna show you what I saw last time I was out You can see How this brake pad here is flush with the drum and this one is not You See that yeah, this one is not you can see it's sticking out a little bit. That's that's not good. That's an immediate out of service. So that's why I'm doing the rest of the three wheels because I haven't done brakes on this truck, on this trailer in a long time. So first thing you gotta do is remove the wheel. You're gonna need a big impact. Remove the wheels and also check your PSI. These gauges are really nice you can get. Um, but you might as well check your PSI. Um, on your tires while you're doing this so what I mean by the wheel moving freely obviously when I had the drum on that means the brakes are released so you can rotate the wheel so you can pull the drum off if you have the regular um, brake set you won't be able to rotate the wheel so then you got to go into the brake chamber and release the brake chamber to release the brakes it's just a lot of extra work if you ask me and then while you're if you have trailer hubs like mine check your hub oil obviously but um so yeah so then what you got to do is i just got a uh i just take a narrow flat uh screwdriver to pull the um to pull the spring sorry so you got two springs to pull front and back and then you got one big one right there now once I pull the, the two front ones, then I can pull the whole pad off. So um, what you do is you just get your screwdriver in there and you pry up on the spring. It's hard to do one-handed. Anyways, you just got to get it up underneath the hook of the spring because the spring goes into the back right there. And then the other one and this in the back right there that spring there so you only got to pull off the two springs and the whole entire pad will come off all right i already got my pads from my parts guy all four um even though i already did that one i'm not that that set is pretty much almost brand new so and they the the mechanics tell you oh you if you do one one wheel you should do the other wheel I don't think that's necessary. If the pad is good, why change it? Because your slack adjusters, one there and one there, your slack adjusters adjust the brake, not the wheel or the axle. So if you have good brakes on that wheel, why change them? Because your slack adjuster is going to make up for what this wheel's doing, that wheel should do as well. So anyways, and then what I'm going to do is after I, uh, well, let, let me pull these pads real quick. All right, guys, I got the two springs off. What I did was I just took two screwdrivers. I put one on the back side. I'm grabbing. I put one on the back side here where that spring came out. I just pr pried it up like that, and then I stuck another screwdriver into the hook part, and then I, she popped right off. So, And then once you do that, the brakes are going to come right off. Um, they'll lift, but I need two hands. So... Now I got both springs off. That one's going to be the pivot point. So I'll just pull the pull the pads. I'll show you. Hold on. All right, guys, just like that. And then, the, like I said, that spring acts as a pivot point. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some brake cleaner. I'm going to great, uh, clean the S-cam. That's really all i got to do. Now these right here, these will have to be changed eventually. And this nut here actually provides pressure on these. So they look good now. Um, I don't really see that being a problem. Um, but if you had a problem with one of these cylinder, I don't know it's a, what, what it's actually called, but um, you just take a, uh, an impact and a wrench and pull this nut and then you can tap these out. You should be able to tap them right in. So, But I don't have time to do all that right now. I'm kind of in a crunch because I'm leaving tomorrow. But I will take some brake cleaner and a, and, a, and a wire brush and just clean those up. And then the S-cam. I don't think that's necessary, but... And then my... My pads on this, it comes with the whole kit. New springs and the cylinder pieces, whatever. Um, and this is a freight liner part. Excuse my shop, it's a wreck. That's why we got the truck pulled out. Here's your um, part number for a Meritor Platinum Shield. So that's your part number for that. So I'm going to go ahead and put you on pause. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the... I'll, I'll show you. Hold on. All right, guys. So as you can see, you got that little that piece right there that goes... That's one of these. So what I like to do is just pop it in there. Like so. And then get the other part in there. And into the hole. And then I just take a regular hammer and I'm gonna hit it. I gotta put I gotta I need both hands. So you just pop it in like that and then just give her a strike with the hammer. I can't do it in one hand. And then you just tap it with the hammer. You're gonna do one on this one and one on this one. You're not gonna go on I mean depending on the brake style I guess or the drum size. Uh, I go, it's gonna go on the inside hole like that one there. So you gotta go on that inside hole, not the outside inside inside outside all right guys like so so it takes it takes a few wax you got to just kind of get it in there um, now I'm gonna go ahead and take the big spring big blue one sides just like that and then I'm gonna bring it over to the wheel to the seat uh, to the I don't know what the hell you call it man. like I said I'm not a mechanic I don't pretend to be one so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab the, uh, the brake cleaner and clean that with a wire brush real quick all right guys so I cleaned up uh, the S cam and those cylinder pieces what I did when I inspected those, I took a new one out of the out of the box, and I just kind of sized it up there to see how much wear was on there. And it doesn't seem like much. It's almost the same size. I don't. Pretty close. A little war, but I think it's it's good. So, like I said, if those are damaged or loose, you're gonna have to replace them. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the pads on now forgot to mention so this kit also comes with two of these smaller ones and then two of the bigger ones obviously to replace those but you also need one right here for the pivot piece and I'll show you what I do with those all oh, right here then these little locking pins again I got to do this with two hands but so the I'm gonna put you on pause, sorry. Alright, so it goes like that on there. And then you gotta put the seal in there, and then these little tits right here, these little groove or these little corners or whatever, you have to rotate them so that they sit inside here. I'll put you on pause. 
All right, that's how they go on there like that. The one on the top, one on the bottom. And what those are for is that rounded part in your S cam. You have two of them, right? So when you pump your brake or when you step on your brakes, this S cam rotates. And the S cam, the rounded part, will grab this and apply pull, pull or, or push the, uh, the brake pad to the drum. So these obviously are very important to go so when the S-cam rotates, it grabs it. Oh shit, is my damn S-cam cracked? Oh shit, I gotta look at that, hold on. Oh, for a second there, I thought my S-cam was cracked. But that's the reason why you inspect and clean your S-cam. Alright? Because you could have a crack in there. So, that's the importance of cleaning this stuff. Before, I mean, if you start clean, you'll end cleaned, right? So that's obviously why you want to clean up your S cam. All right. All right, guys. So I got my, yeah, it just moved. It just fell as I moved. But you're going to have to go on your slack adjuster and use a set, a three eighths, I think it is. Hold on. Yeah, three eighths inch open end, but use a 12 point side and go on that. And you'll see when you turn this, it only turns one way. If you, if you, need to go the other way you stick a screwdriver up underneath that plate a flat tip and you can lift that up and it will let you go the opposite way so you can see as i turn this you can see the s cam moving all right so i gotta get my s cam to get onto those cylinders but that's how you move your s cam all right i'm gonna put you on pause so you just get a 7 16 you put it on the end of your slack adjuster and you rotate it and your s cam will move so you can get it over because there's no way you're going to stretch that big ass spring that blue spring is thick so that's what she said so anyway so i'm gonna go ahead and get this rotated so i can get that put on the s cam so i got the top one in there and you can see where she's hooked on there on the s cam and on that front cylinder so now you just got to maneuver this bottom pad onto the other part of the rounded part of the s-cam all right so i can't do it two hands so i gotta put you on pause all right got got it in the s-cam okay but there's a little gap back here behind the s behind that cylinder so the front's not lined up yet so now you gotta move the you gotta uh rotate the s-cam through your slack adjuster okay so i'm gonna go ahead and do that okay so i rotated the wrench which rotated the slack adjuster, which lined me up there, all right? So we're good to go on this wheel. Now I just gotta put the two, uh, well, not yet. I gotta put the two front springs on and I'm gonna show you how I do that, hold on. Okay, so your two orange springs go on like that. Now, that's way too far. There's no way you're stretching it into the hole. So what I do is I grab a, a screwdriver, a real thin one, that's not what she said. And then what you do is you bring it up Ah, darn it. There's, I can't do this one-handed, but I'm gonna show you how I do it. So I grab this, and then I put the screwdriver into the end like this, and I just kind of maneuver it in there, and I tilt it, and you just, it, it takes a few times. Sometimes you get it on the first shot, but you just, ah, <laughs> I gotta do it two hands. But that's how you do it there. I'm gonna put you on pause. All right, that went in like so. Now I'm gonna do the back, same thing. I'm gonna take the screwdriver, hook it onto the spring, and put it in the hole and just walk it up, all right? All right, that's it. So that's, that's your final product right there, all right? And make sure your springs are on there 100%. And then uh, now I'll go ahead and I'll put my drum on. Make sure the inside of your drum is nice and clean. Maybe take a wheel brush, uh, a brush to it. Um, I mean, unless there's a bunch of debris and shit in there, but uh, that's pretty much it, man. And I gotta fill my hub oil. But this is the time to check everything. Um, hub oil, your, you know, inspect your drums, inspect your S cams, so on and so on and so on. All right. So other than that, that's pretty much on how to do brakes on a, on, well, pretty much any trailer. But this is a Benson, so. Anyways, please like and subscribe to the channel. Ciao.